Sierra Software Tutorials Object Types and Fill Styles In this video, we will learn about embroidery objects, the stitch types that each of them supports and the tools to create them. Embroidery objects are the building blocks of our designs. In fact, creating a design basically consists of creating a sequence of objects, whose geometries define the shapes of the design, and whose properties set the stitch type that the system will generate for each of them. We have prepared some very simple designs to explore the objects and stitch types available for each of them. Let's start with the simplest one, paths. We use these objects to create shapes based on lines with straight segments, curved segments, or a combination of them. Paths can be opened or closed. The important thing is that the stitches of a path object will always be arranged on the line. Let's see what stitch types are available for path objects. We will prepare a workspace that allows us to observe the details. Let's show the stitch marks. Let's open the Object Manager and the Simulation View with an appropriate zoom. We will also use the Smart Design tool to quickly switch between the available stitch types. The basic stitch type for paths is running stitch. It is a sequence of usually small stitches, from 2 to 4 millimeters, arranged one after the other, following the shape of the path. The basic properties of the running stitch are the stitch length and the number of repetitions. It is usual to repeat the stitches, one on top of the other, to obtain an effect of reinforcement or thickening of the lines. Let's change the stitch type to zigzag or satin. Using the smart design, we just need to select the object and click on the icon of the desired stitch type. The system changes the stitch type to zigzag using standard values for the properties, if it is the first time. If we have already created path objects with zigzag stitch type, then it will use the values that were set at that time. The basic properties of zigzags on paths are width and stitch density. We have a graphical control to adjust the width or we can do it with precision from the tool tab or from the object inspector. Zigzags on paths support some stitch effects that we can adjust from the tool tab or from the object inspector. Let's see some examples. Width modulation. End effects. Random width for one or both sides. Variable density. In all the examples, and in order to better observe the stitches that are generated in each case, we have prevented the system from generating the stitches of the base layer. The underlay consists of a set of stitches that are stitched before the main filling stitches, and which are hidden underneath it. Their purpose is to stabilize the fabric to avoid deformations and stitching the main stitches and they are very important to obtain a quality result. Another type of stitch available for paths are the E-stitches. These are decorative stitches, normally used at low density. We have three variants. E, pointing toward one or other side. Double E. 
and square. Effects are also available for this stitch type. Finally, in paths, we can use programmable stitches. This is a bit more complex stitch type. A programmable stitch is a sequence of stitches, usually a few tens, that form a pattern and that the system stores as a block. When used, the system repeats that block, one after the other, following the shape of the path. We have created tens of programmable stitches, ready to use, easily accessible from a library. Let's use Smart Design and assign programmable stitches to our paths. Initially, the system assigns a default programmable stitch. Once we have created paths with some programmable stitch, it will assign the one we have selected as default. From the Tool tab or from the Object Inspector we can access the library and select the programmable stitch we want. The programmable stitches can have several colors and the library allows to filter the list with that criterion, among others. We have marked some of them as favorites to use them in this example. The basic properties of the programmable stitches are the scale and the number of rows. Modulation and end effects are also available. Let's take a look at another object type, columns. Objects of type line and area are common in all graphics software. However, columns are a rather special type of object, possibly only available in embroidery software. Columns are objects that the system processes as an area, that is, stitches are generated considering the inside of the outline. In columns, the points defining the shape which we call nodes, are entered in pairs, one on each side of the outline and can define straight or curved segments. The line between each node of the same pair have a special meaning. It defines the direction that the stitches must have in that place. The system generates the stitches by gradually rotating their orientation so as to match all the directions defined by the pairs of nodes. As we see, we can define the shape of each side freely. It is not required that both sides have the same shape. However, both sides need to have the same number of nodes. It is very common to find this type of object in texts. Many of the characters of the pre-digitized fonts included in the system are built with columns. The most common stitch type in columns is the zigzag stitch. The main property of this type of fill type is density. Note how the stitches rotate between the directions, which are shown as dashed lines. Random and variable density effects are also available here. Another type of stitch that we can use in columns is the E type with its variants, such as double E and square. As this is an object where the main element is the inner area, we have a fill type called pattern stitches or tatami stitches for these object type. In patterns, the general direction of the stitches is similar to that of a zigzag. But instead of a single stitch running from side to side of the shape, several shorter stitches are generated, whose relative lengths change following a predefined sequence or pattern. These stitches, changing their length line by line, generate an effect, characteristic of this type of stitch. There are infinite variations to combine the relative stitch lengths and how they change from line to line, so that we have a library of patterns. Let's activate the stitch marks and select a pattern from the library. Some patterns are created based on regular repeating schemes, we call them uniform patterns. Others are based on a simple image and we call them creative patterns. A third category groups patterns whose repetition rule was entered manually, and for that reason we call them manual patterns. Finally, it is possible to create patterns by combining these three basic categories.
we classify them as combined patterns. Of course, the choice of pattern will depend on the type of design we are creating and the dimensions of the objects. We have available from patterns that only reproduce the appearance of a fabric to some highly decorated ones. The main property of this type of stitch is density. Random and variable density effects are also available for this stitch type. Programmable stitches are also available for column type objects. The main properties here are the programmable stitch model, which we choose from the library, as in the case of paths, the horizontal and vertical scales, and the number of rows. Let's look at another object, the turning areas. As in the case of columns, these are objects where the stitches are generated by considering the inside of the outline. However, we create the outline by simply entering the nodes, one after the other and not side by side. Just keep in mind that the last node must be placed matching the first one in order to define a closed contour. The tool for creating turning areas helps us with this. By inserting a node next to the first one, it automatically closes the shape. In turning areas the directions are not defined by the contour nodes. They are completely independent and we must enter them by capturing a pair of nodes for each direction we want to define. This type of object is widely used, generally with zigzag stitches. It also supports stitches of type E pointing toward one or other side. Double E N square the turning areas also allow pattern stitch type and programmable stitches. Random edge and variable density effects are also available. Another widely used object are uniform areas. Basically they are defined by a closed contour and the stitches are generated covering the inner region of the contour and following a single direction. It is an essential object type, used to create almost all regions whose dimensions exceed 10 to 15 millimeters in both directions. For this type of object, the most commonly used stitch type are the fill pattern stitches. Perhaps the most notable feature of this type of object is that it supports holes. That is, we can create other closed outlines inside the main outline and the system will not generate stitches inside them, thus resulting in a hole with respect to the main region. Let's see the stitch types supported by these objects. Pattern stitches, with all stitches following a single direction. Considering the shape of the object and the orientation of the direction line, which we can easily adjust, we get different visual textures. Uniform areas also support programmable stitches, oriented with a single direction and with the possibility of adding holes. We can use any of the programmable stitches available in the library. Cross stitch, a type of decorative stitch, that imitates a handmade embroidery technique. The stitches are placed following a single direction. Among the properties of this type of filling, the most important is the straw stitch size. We can use the uniform areas to include applicus in our design. The applique technique consists of using a fabric cutout instead of stitches, to cover a region of the design. This type of filling usually begins with a set of running stitches along the contour to indicate where the fabric cutout should be placed. After these stitches, a machine function is commanded to stop the machine so that the fabric cutout can be placed. Then a set of stitches is embroidered to fix the fabric. These can be running stitches, zigzag stitches, or both. They are usually called tack-down stitches. The properties of this type of filling allow us to adjust the parameters of each of the stages, placement stitches, running tack-down and zigzag tack-down.
We can also select a fabric, so that in simulation we have a more realistic view of what the design will look like. Note that this type of filling does not use a direction line. Another fill type available for uniform areas is radial fill. In this fill type the system calculates concentric contours towards the inside of the main contour and then generates running stitches for them. Two variants are available, concentric, where each ring is a closed path, and radial, where the rings are connected to each other in a spiral shape. The properties of this fill type allows us to adjust the distance between the rings and the stitch length of the running stitches. Here again, a direction line is not used. We can also use the texture fill type in uniform areas. Textures are pre-built designs that we can select from a library and use to fill the inside of the area. Many of the textures are large, non-repetitive designs. We can then move the texture to select which region to use and adjust its scale and angle. The system crops the texture using the outline of our object. If we scale or rotate our area, the texture will not be scaled or rotated, it will simply use a larger or smaller region of the texture. Finally, uniform areas support a decorative fill called stippling. The system creates a winding path that runs around the inside of the area, covering it completely, and then arranges running stitches over that path. This filling has properties that allow us to control how close together the strokes are, how curved they are and how random. In addition, we can define the stitch length that the system should use in the running stitch. This fill type uses a direction line that sets the orientation of the strokes. We have two more object types, texts and monograms. For them, we have prepared a specific tutorial lettering and monogramming that we invite you to watch as always in the online manual within the embroidery digitizing chapter objects types and fill styles section we will find more details about the topics we saw in this video thank you for watching